Hey everybody, good afternoon, it's Friday and it is time to smoke some ribs. I'm getting ready to uh, throw some ribs on the new smoker. It'll be the first cook on that particular smoker and we're going to try some baby back ribs, dry rubbed, smoked, and uh, then we'll sauce them up at the end and get a nice uh, sticky texture on there. It's going to be great, I hope. So stay tuned for the video. Smoking ribs on the Camp Chef grill. One of the first things I did is I took the racks off of the grill and I put tin foil, aluminum foil, whatever you want to call it, where the fat is going to drip. It'll just make it a little bit easier cleanup for me and that'll still run it right down to the drip bucket on the side of the, the smoker. So, put these racks back in. And uh, we'll get this thing fired up. We, uh, I, I switched, I switched to the, um, the different set of pellets. I switched it over to the competition blend just to see what the difference is. I had just oak in there. I didn't have any hickory, which is what I'd like to use, but I have to order some. So I got the, the racks back in. I got it plugged in. I got it turned down over here. I'm just going to switch it over. The recipe that I'm uh, working on right now, the, the guy, uh, said that he usually does his smoking at 275. Others said 225, some said 250. So I'm just gonna follow what he had to say and uh, I'm gonna try it at 275 and we'll see if it works out. So it's going through its starting process. Still says start down there. So it's not quite getting up to temp yet. The, uh, the smoke is smelling amazing though. Now it's time to go over and start prepping the ribs. I'm over at the workbench slash food prep station. I made sure I put something under this because obviously this uh, table is not food grade quality. Um, but this is the area that I have to work with. We're gonna keep everything clean and tidy, just not let it touch any of the surface area here. So, baby back ribs, center cut, and what we're going to start with, first I'm going to get some gloves on, because my hands have been moving some things around in the shop, we've got to make sure they're clean. Got a bowl full of goodies. We're going to start with mustard, and we just picked this up, so I'm going to have to open it up. The other one was just about empty. And this is um, this is what we're going to use for our binder. It's going to help the dry rub stick to the ribs. And we're going to put this on both sides and uh, just kind of get it all rubbed in there. Some people will say to let it sit for so long. Some people say go right for it. So. We're going to go right for it, see if they're right. People use oil sometimes and other things to try to, as a binder, but a lot of people talk about using mustard, so that's what we're going to roll with today. So we get this mustard on both sides, and then we'll come back to the rub. Now we have all the mustard on, it's time to add the dry rub. This one here is Bearded Butcher Blend Seasonings Hollywood Blend. I'm going to use that on this one, and this one is, I don't know, I think it's either Bobby Flay or somebody's recipe. Um, it's a pretty uh, easy, simple one, 
It's got a tablespoon of cumin, tablespoon of paprika, tablespoon of ground garlic, or granulated garlic. I think that's just garlic powder, right? And a tablespoon of onion powder, tablespoon of chili powder, a tablespoon of brown sugar, two tablespoons kosher salt, something I didn't know. Kosher salt has half the salt in it as table salt does. So if you're gonna use table salt, you wanna do half the amount. So you would only do one tablespoon of table salt. Uh, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a teaspoon black pepper, a teaspoon white pepper. And just mix it all up, and that's what this is. I wish I had a shaker for this, but we'll just do it. Kind of like so. Same thing over here. And we're going to do this on both sides, obviously. It's just a little easier to do one side and then the other. Try to get that all over. You can see. Ooh, man, it looks good. And that mustard definitely helps hold that in there. Now you might be wondering what these two pieces of meat are. I, I trimmed them off of the back side of the ribs and uh, I didn't want it to go to waste. So I'm trying to keep my right hand clean for while I, I'm picking everything else up. Try to bunch these back in so we don't touch anything on the table. The grill's up to temp, and uh, the dry rub has been on those racks of ribs for about 10, 15 minutes. It's uh, sweated in, and it's uh, ready to go. A lot of people put it on a couple hours beforehand. This guy said, hey, while it's, uh, while it's cooking, while it's uh, getting up to temperature, that's when you put everything on and get it right on the grill, and I can't complain or argue with a national champion. I guess this guy's won like four in a four four years in a row. So we're gonna let it do its thing. It's uh it's ready to go in. So let's put these things on the grill. that meat away so set it over here all right it's 130 so I'm gonna set a timer for two hours I'm not gonna mess with them at all and uh, I'm gonna come out and take a look at them see where they're at and see if it'll be time to put them in foil or not all right be patient it'll be here before you know it one rib grill master said to cook it for about two hours or until the dry rub didn't want to smear. He does a smear test. The other guy said cook for about two and a half hours and check the ends of the ribs. Once it starts coming cooking back from the end of the ribs, it was good. But they both had different temperatures too. So I think we're good because 
because it looks awesome, it smells awesome, but also when you try to do the smear test, that, that dry rub is not smearing away and it's pulled away from the ribs, the bones. So, I'm going with it. Let's see, I better get some tongs. Okay, got Winnie the shop dog in here, she is sniffing. Hands up. Or my cutting board, whichever one you see. Alright, alright, alright. This one is that one's really thick. No way. Alright, we'll get the smoker closed back up. And now we're gonna take them over. Well, you'll see. This is in step seven. We're gonna take them over to the workbench slash cooking prep area. And you'll see the upgrade I did while you were gone and waiting for these delicious ribs to get ready. Let's check it out. Hey, everybody, what are you doing in the grrr kitchen? Sh kitchen. I don't know what we're gonna call this place. This is kind of like the shop in the kitchen. But look at this. That's a nice laminate countertop right there. Well, a piece of laminate. This is our old, this is what we had left over from our old kitchen in our last house. And this is what I do a lot of my cutting venison on. I've uh, got this piece and I just put it on the kitchen table. Boom. So I cleaned it off all real nice and clean. And I actually used this. This is in the lemon, uh, pie video that Joy did, she made this cleaner. It's some lemon juice, um, some vinegar, and baking soda, I think. Anyways, she was cooking that stuff up, so I tried it out on that. After I had it cleaned, I used that and it got even more clean. So, okay, we're going to push these out of the way here. And this is the next step. Tin foil, double thickness. This is new for me here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, I got measurements on this piece of paper. I don't know if you saw me pull it over there or not, but. Okay, I watched some guys do some awesome cooking and this is how they do it. They get their stuff like it is now, get the ribs ready to go. And then we need some butter, just a little bit. <laughs> we need some honey. This is starting to crystallize, so hopefully it'll come out. But it's gonna cook up just fine. Then we need some brown sugar. And we need some apple juice, which I have right over here. Apple juice. Here we go. We're going to do two tablespoons of butter. Each one of those marks is a tablespoon. There's eight tablespoons in, what is this considered, a half a cup of butter? So we put two tablespoons down in the bottom. Then we get us some brown sugar. We put a, what, a tablespoon of this, I think. I'm trying to see what my recipe says, I'm pretty sure. Do, 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 do. It says, I'm reading. Pretty sure I read that. It said to put a tablespoon of honey, two tablespoons of brown sugar. Man, this is not good for you. I'm sure of it. But it's gonna taste really good. 
All right, so two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and a tablespoon of honey. And we're gonna take the lid right off of this baby. I'm going with a tablespoon. That's probably more than a tablespoon, but that's what we're calling it. Then we take a rack of ribs, meat down. We do the same thing on the top. Butter, brown sugar. Stay on there, don't run away. Another one. Boom. Some honey, which is getting all over my table, doggone it. I should have let Joy take, let me have some of the good stuff. Boom, all right. Then, we're gonna make the boat. I don't think I have enough tin foil. I should have checked that. Okay. Here we go. Gotta be able to make things happen here. There we go. It's gonna be all right. We're not gonna make a huge mess. I hope. I hope. Okay, here we go. Move it on over. See that? Now, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some of this apple juice, and we're gonna really hope it doesn't go all over the place, but I can't guarantee much. Yeah, that'll work, that'll work. Here we go, apple juice, just a little. And this is what's got Joy nervous because she says she does not like apples mixed with her pork. Even though it's a cool thing that everybody's doing, she doesn't want it. I'll fold this over like so. I'm gonna set it right back on here. And I'm gonna do that all over again with the other one, but I don't have my foil pulled out and you don't wanna watch that. So. Next thing we're gonna be doing is going back to the smoker. I just did an awesome presentation of the second rack of ribs. I folded the, I don't know if you can see, is it this one? Look, I took, I, I creased the, the foil together instead of ugly like the other one was, had it all setting out. I sprinkled the brown sugar because that's what it said in the directions. I think I sang you a song. It was awesome. <laughs> And then I said, now, off to the smoker. And then I went around to grab the camera and I had taken a picture instead of recording. What the heck? Ugh. So anyways, the next, the second one, it's gonna be great. It looks so much better, the presentation of the foil. I'm hoping that the apple juice doesn't turn Joy off too much because she said she doesn't like it, she made um, pork of some sort with apple juice in it one time years ago and she said never again she does not like apples in her in her uh, pork she does not like sweet with her savory I said I have no idea what savory means but okay but I told her just to trust me and if anything you know I'll eat all of them if she doesn't like it so we're gonna try to make her proud I know she does amazing in the kitchen. I'm just trying to step up my game a little bit. So, gotta get these things back on the heat. Back to the smoker. All right, glad that's not a far walk. We're back. Oh, how are you doing, smoker? Okay, here we go, people. Putting it back on. Can't remember which one's which. I'm pretty sure this is the the homemade blend. This is the bearded butchers. All right. Yeah. Now, this step they say is about an hour. Now the difference is, is the one rack is a lot thinner than the other one. But what we're looking for now is to get our core temperature of our meat to about 207 degrees. 
So I'm gonna give it that hour, and then I'm gonna open it up carefully and check it with a temperature probe and to see if we've hit that 207. If we are, we're right on. So, see you in an hour. It's been one hour. It's 4.50 now. I'm gonna open this thing up and uh, we're gonna check for some temperatures. I hear it sizzling in there. One two oh seven. One ninety seven. Two hundred. Two oh three. Two oh five. Two oh seven. Two oh seven point. Okay, it's at two oh eight. Let's make sure. Let's say that one's golden. This is the one that's really thick on the end. I'm gonna pull this one out carefully. Woo. Toasty. All right, this one on this other end is really thick. Probably can't see that. It's really small. Says 207. All right. Back, back up. Get them both over there. Now we're going to put a barbecue sauce on them and uh, bring them back for a little bit of a, a glaze effect on them. All right. Let's head back to the workshop table. Okay, step 27. I don't know which step it is. We're gonna open these babies up one at a time. Ooh, it smells good, I'm telling you. Okay, see that? This is a good 50 degrees out, so it gets to see the steam. All right, can you see this? These bones kind of poking out already. That fat has rendered down on the backside. And that's how you know, I mean, I can twist these bones around a little bit. So what we're going to do is tip this up, kind of get that juice off the top. Oh, man. Yeah. And this one was the homemade rub. We're just going to throw a little bit more on there just to dress it up a little bit. All right, that's a little more than I wanted to because I don't have a shaker on that one. Just. We're gonna tip it over. We're gonna roll it right onto this rack here. Oh. Yep. That's the goods, man. That's the goods. I might charge them to eat dinner tonight. Oh. All right. Let's see here. Next. This is the butcher's, the bearded butcher's blend. Once again. 
And this one actually, that one got a hole in it must be. All the juice ran out. This got more juice in it. But the bones are sticking out. Oh baby, we're gonna tip it up. Oh, I think I'm gonna fall right out. We tip it up and get some of that juice off of it. Who wants to come to my house? Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> no uh, pigs were harmed in the making of this video. I didn't do it. I don't have any ethical issue with it. Somebody else did it. But they did a good job. Alright. The juice is... Don't let the juice get loose. That's what they say. That's not what they say. I said that. All right. Paper towels. Joy Joy allowed me to have a half a roll. It was nice of her. <laughs> He's getting away from me. Look out. Okay. I'm going to shake a little. Shake and bake. All right. Oh, no. Don't pull too hard. Yeah. Little on this side, you know. Don't want the family to be disappointed. Oh, forgot this other one. So, I got a feeling somebody's gonna be like, it's spicy. I hope it's not too spicy. But that's what milk is for, or something. All right. Now, now, we wanna glaze on this stuff, right? This stuff's a little thicker than we probably want it to be. But, yeah, it's pretty thick. Just a little smackerel. Uh-huh. Man, somebody's gonna... I told Joy, I hope this stuff is so good, she wants to chase me down and kiss me. I won't run fast. Okay. Oh yeah. It's like a little karate kid. Paint the fence. Paint the fence. I don't know. Oh. Uh -huh. Yep. Mm. I asked Brielle if she wanted me to uh, put barbecue sauce on it. She's like, ah, eh, whatever. Either that or I'll dip it. <laughs> they might still have to dip it. I don't know. But this, you know, you want to get your fingers a little messy when you're eating ribs. A little more on that edge. And then we're going to go put them back in the smoker. I don't know, five minutes or so. Just just get the, get the barbecue sauce tacky. Now Joy is in there cooking something that she's going to give to some people tomorrow, I think. She's going to be handing out. And uh, hopefully she... Um, has thought about what's going with this. She said something about homemade macaroni and cheese, and I don't think it's on in the oven, so we better get that figured out, because these are gonna be done, and who wants to eat cold ribs? Not me. All right, we're gonna go put them in. Let's go. This is my uh, jerky racks that I got, and it fits just inside here. Slide it in. Woo! Yeah, baby. I don't know, maybe five minutes. We'll take a look in a little bit. Okay, time is up. You guys ready? You gotta hit the like button if you're ready for me to open this grill. Hit the like button. I'm gonna wait. You know I can't wait. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, baby. I say those are done. Oh, all right. Taking them babies into the house. Let's go.
Hey everybody, that's Winnie the shop dog and she's tired. She's been out at the shop helping me smoke those ribs and then she even got to eat some rib bones tonight. She's had a big day. Don't know if everybody knows it, but she's got two weeks till puppies. Tomorrow morning we are going to the vet to have an x-ray done and to see how many backbones and skulls we can count try to give us a number for how many puppies we have coming and they're supposed to be their due date is mother's day may 10th and that's going to be probably a nice sleepless night but hopefully all the puppies make it and everything goes well so those ribs they're pretty awesome i can't say the rubs were perfect um the one i told you kosher salt is Half the amount of salt is table salt. I told you that because I had already put table salt in it. And I was pretty sure they were going to be salty. They're pretty salty. The other one, pretty good. I mean, they both had a little spice to them. Brenna is not into spice. So she wanted to eat them and they were too hot for her. So she just had a double serving of mac and cheese and a double serving of cheesy potatoes. So... Everybody else was pretty good with them. Uh, I even sent some over to my father-in-law, and I've saved some to the side for my dad. So, got to get them to him. Um, well, hopefully you enjoyed the smoking of the ribs. That was the first, that was the maiden voyage of the new smoker. And I think it went pretty well. We brought the grates in tonight and washed them. I took Joy out on a little training session. Uh, showed her how to empty the ash, ashes from the burn, uh, the fire bowl, and how to ash, empty out the uh, ash cup. And then I showed her kind of how it runs, and there was like two inches of fat in the uh, fat bucket. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, that wasn't in our food. Anyway, that's that. Um, just... Uh, finishing off um, tonight's video that I was putting up and I figured I needed to do an ending video for this one and tomorrow we're going to get x-rays so this is going to be great hopefully maybe you guys will see some videos of some boxer puppies and uh, we're, we're getting excited two weeks to go okay everybody well thank you again for everybody that's been watching uh, really enjoy seeing the comments seeing uh the likes and how many people have been watching um give it a shot check out some of the other videos if this is the first video you watched go check some of the other ones out this is going to be video 35 i believe so we've been trying to put some content out there and just trying to learn how to edit i learned something new today on this video um i didn't know that you could hit the button to flip the cameras uh while it was videoing so it was pretty cool anyway that's that rambling it's time to go to bed uh so if you haven't subscribed please do uh put a like if you liked the video and put a comment in and if you have any suggestions of something you might want to see go ahead and put that in the comments too uh, we're trying some new things once in a while but we want it to be right around our wheelhouse of, you know, hunting and gathering and family and things like that. So, um, that's it. We love you. God loves you. And we'll see you next time on the next video. Have a great night. Hey, everybody, that's 
Winnie the shop dog. And she's beat. We had a long day.